The show goes on.
Welcome, welcome. Thank you for singing along. Thank you for clapping along and dancing. I want to do a song with everyone here tonight and everyone tuning in in your living rooms. We know going through something difficult is made even more difficult when you have to go through it alone. And we thank Hashem for Aliyah, because with Aliyah, no Jew is ever alone. Just the 
we languish in darkness with only our faith alone. Our silent hopes and whispered prayers echoing painfully the dream in our hearts yet to grow. Imagined it so many times, O Rachamonu is a kingdom for that day, a home of our own. Offered every tear we have, done all there is to do, but we know we're not in this alone. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time it is my high honor to welcome to the stage Shulem Lemmer. different distances between and fixing it is not as simple as it seems but there's understanding if you just believe together we will all join our hearts in unity love will help you to be brave rushing in just like the way Good 
hide under the same sun love could never be wrong and it helps us be strong as we face the Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for clapping along. Thank you for singing along. I chose this song. We all chose this song this, as my first song because it really encompasses what Aliyah does. No matter what our difference is, no matter what we are, a Yiddish and a Shama is a Yiddish and a Shama. And let's, let's raise us all, all together and be Kirav, not only the Chabad does not, not only Kirav Rechoikim, but Kirav Kroivim in the best possible way. And uh, it's a beautiful thing to see. As I was sitting at the table, this young gentleman asked me, so are we going to do some Chazanis? So here's a song for you. It's not all the way Chazanis, but Abyssal Kemen Hovim.
me It's my pleasure to call Benny back on stage. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. All right, this nigga, we need everybody to sing along. Are you ready? Maybe I saw me yet at suffering in the veck, but still me arc is the your red. Maybe I saw me yet at suffering in the veck, but still me arc is the your red. Oh, me very rufi say a horror of the yoy let the sorrow of the yoy let the siado. Oh, me very rufi say a horror of the yoy let the sorrow of the yoy let the siado. Yeah. 
to Aliyah's celebration of 20 years of connection and growth. First, I want to thank Hashem for everything leading up to this moment, for Aliyah, for myself. It's been a long journey and it's not over yet. First, I have to thank also my wife, Raquel. Without her, I wouldn't be here. She just had twin boys, Baruch Hashem, and somehow I'm here. We still made it. Uh, it all started about 20 years ago. That's why we're here when a friend of mine, Yechiel, a.k.a. Mike Jaffe, told me there's a cool shul in Crown Heights. Let's check it out. And I said, really? A cool shul? I don't know. But I'll try. Got to try everything once. Kind of. Anyway, so it started there, and it spawned into the first time learning with Rabbi Mendy by Tanya for the first time. I didn't realize that until many years later. Hey, that was a Tanya book. Okay. And uh, my first letter to the Rebbe was written in Aliyah by the convincing friend and Rabbi Mashpia, my first Rabbi in Crown Heights, Rabbi Moishi Feiglin. <laughs> so what is Aliyah? Some of us know, some of us are tuning in live. Some of us don't know what this is all about. Aliyah sounds like something, you know, you do going to Israel. But it's similar because in Tanya it says the B'nai Aliyah and that's what we're trying to accomplish here. Everybody should feel comfortable going to shul. Everyone should feel comfortable in their Jewish skin. Nobody should feel like they are uncomfortable. What Aliyah has done for me, what Aliyah has done for many others, is an exceptional thing. Tonight, what we're trying to do is raise $770,000 to continue the work of Aliyah. And it's really easy. Just get your credit card and any other payment method ready and go to aliyah20.com. We need your support, or as Maishi always says so eloquently, be a partner. Every donation over $180 will go into an auction for Pesach in Phuket and a Tzfasman $2,000 gift voucher. Okay. My wife and I started Aliyah 20 years ago. We were looking to go on Shluchas. The year before I was in Kailo, I was in Beis Menachem Wilkesbury, and my good friend Uri Perlman was saying that these kids need a hub in Crown Heights. Not everyone's gonna make it to us. They need, they need something local, locally based. We realized this is where we're meant to be. And I'm truly humbled to be here 20 years later. 
I was 17 years old, a crazy English kid. We're drinking beers on the corner of, I believe it would have been Crown and Kingston Avenue. Police pulled up with the cars, the lights. And then I just see this rabbi running. Now I know it's Moshe Phelan. He came, said, oh, it's okay. These are my boys. They come to my synagogue. In 18 years of living, I don't think I've ever had a positive interaction with a religious person until that time. I uh, grew up in Crown Heights. I've uh, been here all my life. People like me that, you know, maybe not as religious as the, the next door neighbor. And sometimes that can make you feel like you're not part of society. In the darkest of times, I couldn't find anybody that would even sit with me for five seconds to ask me how I'm doing. I went on the streets all day for years, at, pretending like everything's good, that nobody else should know that I'm, I'm hurt inside, I'm hurting. I was just working at a bagel shop. Rabbi Fanglin came in and invited me to uh, come to their Hanukkah party that they were doing that night. I went from being like, withdrawn to being much more confident, and I think that Aliyah gives that potential. You know, Aliyah is there to tell you no. God loves you as much as he loves the person with the hat and jacket. When we meet a lot of people, for whatever reason, it could be because of school, it could be because of home things, they're just not operating from a place of confidence and belief in themselves. Our goal and our mission is to take them, spend time with them, and help them see within themselves that they're powerful. Aliyah has not a typical shul. The less religious you look on the outside, the more likely you are to get an Aliyah. The tighter the hug will be. We have a lounge, a place to guys hang out, we have a gym. We do Shabbatans, we help them with jobs. We've also helped people uh, with therapy. We have a film booth on Friday. Some guys haven't put on film in a long time, they put on at the booth, and that ignites that spark. They feel that love, they can snap me, they see how we're there for them no matter what. If there's one thing that I should say that is a fabric behind everything, it's the love, unconditional love, that everybody walks through the doors of feel. Um, I had a relative of mine, kind of went down the wrong path, um, ended up in a very bad environment, drugs, addiction. While that was happening, I as well ended up in that kind of environment. It came to a point where that relative of mine had to get help, and I had to get help quick, and I didn't know who to turn to. My family didn't know who to turn to, and eventually I just took a leap of faith and I called Rabbi Faglin. He immediately, without even thinking twice, uh, made some phone calls, got that person the immediate help they needed. Going back 13 years ago when I joined Aliyah, there was an incident with a young man. He was like 17 or maybe 18, and his father threw him out of the house. He came to Aliyah that night. He'd never placed to sleep. We were discussing what happened. He was crying. And we kept a very close relationship all the years. I was walking down Kingston and uh, I see Maishi and he has the phone by the booth and he asked me if, if I'd be willing to come on the phone and I said yes. And the next week we come by and I'll see him again and he asked me the same thing. I started going to Aliyah um, quite often for Shabbos. Now we're a year and a half after that, almost even a little more, and I can say I'm clean and that relative of mine are clean. If it weren't for that one person or that one institution that would listen to us when nobody else did, I can't tell you today that we would even have a chance at a normal life. At a certain point, I, I wanted to go spiritually as a person. I would pass by with the, the booth with my phone on me and I'd say, I'm going to send 70 down with the minion. And in the last year or so, he moved away next to a Chabad house where he got to know that rabbi. And then everything started pouring out, all that Yiddishkeit and the love what he had. And now, as we talk right now, he's keeping Shabbos and eating kosher and putting on film, all from his own will. One guy told me, you know why we don't reciprocate to the love? You know why you guys show so much love and you don't get it back? We never felt it before. We're, we're still learning. It's a new language. The unconditional love, when they see it here, they learn it, they experience it, and then emerge to Shem, they will be able to give it over to people in their own lives.
I grew up in a Chabad family that had a love and passion for Yiddishkeit. From a very early age, I grew up in ma- I grew a major passion for Chazanas and davening. My mother even helped me make a shul in my room. I had an Arkadish, Bima, Stender, etc. I even s- insisted my mother make me a white parechis to switch during Tishrei. As you can tell, I took my, my fake shul very seriously. As I grew older and experienced the world more, I decided Judaism was not for me. I left all the values I was brought up with behind and started living a secular life. I even remember driving up Kingston and Shabbos while listening to Avram Fried music and Benny and Shalom Lemmet, of course. Watching all the Yidden walking up and down Kingston Avenue in the Talesim and thinking to myself, how lucky am I that I was able to leave this cult and find my own journey? I still never let go of listening to Jewish music and, love, and loving the davening of Shabbos and Yom Tov. Like every year, it was time for a Shani Yom Kippur and my neshama was yearning to be a Baal Tefillah. Knowing that no one would accept me as a lifestyle I was living, I reached out to Maishi Fagan. He welcomed me with open arms but made one condition with me. He said I had to keep Shabbos for three weeks beforehand in order to comply with Allahic rules for Baal Tefillah and Yom Neram. I said to Maishi, are you crazy? Keeping Shabbos for three weeks? I have no intention of ever being religious again. Don't try to lure me back in because it won't work. He said, I will see what I can do. He came back to me and said, I would at least need to keep one Shabbos beforehand in order to be chazen. After much contemplation, I agreed. It was an amazing feeling to be able to stand up in front of a crowd of people and connect to Judaism in the biggest way that I knew through the Tefillahs of Rosh Hashanah and Kippur and not be just for wearing jeans as that was happening. Yeah. <laughs> After Yom Tif, I came to Maishi and said, I know I came to you first, but can I still get paid? He said, I can offer you a dollar for your services. I said, hey, money is money, I'll take it. As the years passed and I slowly started finding my way back, Aliyah always was always a place that I was able to come and daven by and feel welcomed and unjudged. I remember my first time coming back to Aliyah on a Friday night after years of not keeping Shabbos. All the dancing and singing of Lecha Daidi inspired me so much. It brought back so many nostalgic memories. I actually walked up Kingston and thought to myself, wow, I missed this. No one is on their phones. Everyone is walking to their meals to be with their families. Can't be that bad after all. The only reason I'm a Shemar Shabbos today is because of the openness, acceptance, and love that Maishi and his wife have for every Jew that steps foot into his doors. The amount of energy he puts into the young guys there truly shows how much he cares about every single individual. His love is so strong, it's hard to stay away. With that being said, I would like to thank Maishi for the opportunity to speak tonight. It means a lot to me. And oh, by the way, before I forget, the dollar that Maishi gave me was a dollar given to him directly from the Rebbe. Thank you. Bye, 
החיבוק שלך, צחוק של ילדים. ככה אני מבקש, תשמור עלינו תמימים, לא להפסיק להתרגש. חיוך שלך, צחוק של ילדים. כל יום זה רק אנחנו שנינו, על הספה בסלון ואין עולם. אני פורט לך את הלב על גיטרה, ולא צריך לרדוף הכל כבר כאן. בחדרים נשימות קטנות, עיניים עצומות. בחדרים של הלב שלי, שמחות קטנות, שמחות קטנות. ככה אני מבקש, תשמור עלינו פשוטים, בית וסיר על האש, חיבוק שלה, צחוק של ילדים. Now I'm going to do something a little bit gutsy. It's one of my favorite songs, but it happens to be a Benny Friedman song. So, Benny, may I sing it? You allow me? Okay. Let's see. But don't judge me. This is a judgment-free zone, right? This is what Aliyah is all about. Friends, in times like these, it's hard to see past the insanity in a reality so uncertain and unknown. Life as we knew it forever changed, and there's no peace of mind to be found. Who can even make sense of tomorrow When our dreams keep crashing to the ground And yet, as we rise to greet another day And the sun is still bright in the sky Always a reason to hope for better times Though it seems Like the answers worlds away We've got enough, just enough to keep us going Holding on to unbroken simple faith And the heat never bends And the heat never gives up in the night Oh yeah
went dark, crowds dispersed on the streets that were once filled with light. But a brilliant light emerged from deep inside our hearts. Shoes were shuttered and still, but our prayers rang through our homes. Instead of looking out for inspiration, we dug deep and found strength we'd never known. And one more time. Cause when it seems like the answer's worlds away We've got enough, more than enough to keep us going We're holding on to unbroken simple faith Cause the heat never breaks and the heat never bends And the heat never gives never up in the night The heat perseveres through the deep another beautiful song now and I want to sing in Hebrew and it's a tefillah to our children that our children should go in the right ways because it's not only about us it's about the next generation our children is not just about our children it's about what their children will be and so on to the next the next generation so that's why we daven for our children Thank you. 
פתאום הם שישה, עוד רגע שבעה, וכמה שהם מדהימים אבל הלחץ גדל, בנה לו מגדל, ללב יש נק שני חדרים וים מצפון עובד גם שבתות וחגים אתם השנה כבר שנים, אני עוד שבוי בפחדים ש... אני לא אספיק להגיע לשמור להציל הושיע שהבטחתי לשבת בסופו של יום, לדעת שהצלחתי. בינתיים סופי ניצחונות קטנים, מבסוט שלא ברחתי. להשאיר אותי עם עולם מחשב, פשוט עצרתי והקשבתי. לסיפורים על סיפורים, למחשבות, לציורים, לחלומות שיום אחד יקשיבו. לגיבורים, לנסיכות, עם העיניים השוקות. יש ים סודות, הם באמת, תקשיבו. אני מתפלל על ילדים שלי, שלא הרשו את הסריטות שלי, שיחבקו אחד את השני. אמן שיהיו בריאים תמיד. עומד מתבונן ביציע, צופה מהצד ומריע, גם בתהום גם ברקיע, עוזב את הכל
מקום שבו תלך. כולם יודעים שבניסי הוא מתקיים. ואת כל מי שרק תשאל, תשמע שעם ישראל עוד חור. שזה רבונים ורבים ומלמדים ומחנכים וירושלים ונסקונים ציבורים וכולו. אז מזרחי עסק חס ושלום מגיעת נדבור פה. מזרחי עסק בתירו ומצטער וכולו. סבל גם איזה חלחמון ולצלם המסולוי מפוז. הונדרת תזן תרי אי קידוש קינדר והונדרת תזן תין אי קינדר פון זה אי ניו יורק עצמא. ומטלת עיני טומלן הייתוכן ווס פרדנט מזה, מטל לעניונים ונודו שלוש מליגים עם וינקל, ובשעס מדרגת עם דיור גיטר הקרחת, ומחת הנסיף ונדנת הנחלות, דודף סטפיסטון מתנצין, איבר דודס ביספרנומיס הזיכר לזך, עזי דרעי בשתרגי צייד, אף כל העניונים, אף על פי וזי זן עם עניונים לא של רבים, הלך הסכמנו וכמה זה ודרגם מצרית אז אז קודם מצרו זין. אין יידיש קין, הלך הסכמנו וכמה דהוז בכיח צמצנו זין ידר. לפי עניון ניצן בלי כנידיש קין. ודטרס הזה שמגמחת אכלות לפני זמן. ומגמחת הנסיף לפני זמן וכולו. בדף חוב מאמר שהוא העיקר ועוד שצריך מתעודם יידיש קין. ועוד גפין צריך עם קורנר פונדר הוי, ועוד גפין צריך דיין דיר, עוד לדיין ביס הכנסת, עוד לדיין ביס המדרש. ומשתק עסק ועניונים רואים דין ברומי של לילון, דרכין דעות לפונגונת. ונרגי צריך בדרך ויר לרשוס הרבי, ומתייד לטוג ואת שוורת מצד חנך לנער על פי דרכי המלוסטם גיין עם דם דרך. המבובו, מתעתוק לינגר, ורדר נוך שוורר, מתאם זך איינקרן ומזולן צביק ארושטלנין לשבת סיצורו, ועל דרך זה בנגי זלהב רצונית ידישקין. עבודו סל סמי מרמוזגר, בהמשך לעומר ליל, יזהלי דובר הוא המזטר תדם שינוי, ודסקום צוזמן, בי דזכן צוזמן, ומבדו סל גברך צנוך היין. בגמור בזמן עוד בזוג פה כל וכל הקיצה ואין עוד דבר תולה אלא בתשובה. דנוכי גבר אין במפור של הגמור הוא רשי ונטייס וסום פוסקי ונחרי נימור רשו אחרי לי וכולו וכולו. ומות מזמן לזמן גבר תדם עניין גמור ונדם עניין רמב״ם ונדם עניין פוסקי ביזן אחרי נחרי נימור. זאת אומרת גבר מזמן לזמן. because the Rebbe gave us the shlichus to lift up every young youth and go out there and bring them in with a smile and lift him up. We saw before a little story about a young guy who was 12 years ago, got thrown out of his house. He went through a very tough time. I got to know him very good. And in the, in the matter of the years, he came closer to the Yiddish guide. He had ups and downs. And, you know, sometimes we learned to sit here, sometimes we went out to eat. It was a half a year ago. He tells me, Nata, I need to take a break. I need to go out somewhere, 
somewhere out in a different country, in a different state. And let me find myself. Baruch Hashem and Ashgach Pratis, he goes out to the state. And he didn't even know. He was one mile away from a base Chabad. And this is a crazy story. He decided that Friday night, he's going to knock on the door from this Chabad house. The shliach is standing inside his house with his wife. They're ready to make Kiddush. They knock on the door. The door opens. They don't even ask who it is. He comes in. They make Kiddush. He sits down. They wash. The shliach didn't even have a chance to ask him who he is. And then as they're starting to eat the first course, the shliach just starts to sing. Tzomo lecho nafshi. The young man sitting next to him will call him David. He goes, Kama lecho bisori bi eretzio veo ye bali moim. The shliach becomes frozen. Who are you? Where are you from? He says, I am David. I am from a Chsidisha family in Crown Heights. My father is a Chassidish in Gaman. My Zayd is a Chassid. My elder Zayd was a Chassid from the Friedrich Rebbe and the Rebbe. And they implanted me. And he says, while I was in Aliyah the last few years, the Lipschaft, what they gave me, and with Fabrengens, what they sat with me, and we sang the Rebbe's Nagunim, and the Sikh is what we learned. I knew that I have it in me to get back on the right, on the, on the right track. And the Shliach, Sat, sat with him that night for hours and hours. And we could proudly say, Baruch Hashem, as today, he's, he's back to Yiddish guide, Kashra, Shabbos, film. He's actually sitting and learning smicha these days. <laughs> One short little story. There was a young guy who came five years ago to Crown Heights, a spiller, you know. He was a player. He had a good time wherever he was going. And, you know, Come in Talia, we're sitting and we're talking, we're having a good time. After two years, he says to me, Nata, I gotta buckle down a little. I said, what do you want? What do you want to do? You want to stop doing this? No, I want to go back to Yeshiva. I said, you're fooling me. He says, no, I really want to go back to Yeshiva. That summer we worked on getting into Yeshiva and we needed to get funds for it. So he set up a GoFundMe. He raised $15,000 in three days to pay for his tuition. And he learned the, that whole year smicha. And then the next year, again, he had to raise the money. And he finished smicha this past year before the summer. Standing there by that sima smicha, I sat there with the most happiest tears of my life. Let's give it a round of applause for Ruben Ben David. <laughs> now I'll give it back to our host. Thank you, Reb Nutta. So, first of all, we would like to remind everybody there is a fundraiser going on. Feel free to go to aliyah20.com. And I'd like to mention Rabbi Moshe Faglin's father and mother, Mordechai and Esther, just donated 10% of the goal, $7,700. Seven thousand seven hundred. Okay. So please tell us a little about yourself and who you are. My name is Rabbi Shalom Leverton. I'm honored to be here tonight with my wife, Ali. We are Shluchim of the Rebbe in West Windsor, New Jersey. Wonderful. What is your connection to Aliyah? Dear friends, as you all know, the world went through a crazy time with a certain virus. But for our family, it was a time of a tremendous simcha of the chasna of our dear daughter, Toby, and our dear son-in-law, Shalom, who are here tonight, sitting right over here. At a time of a simcha that many of us have been zoicha to make, it's a time fraught with many decisions. And of course, the virus didn't help at all. Rabbi Moshe, and Sarah Faglin stepped in, stepped up, 
and were there for us 24-7. They guided my dear daughter, my son-in-law, myself, my wife. They were there for us. Achasna was far out of Crown Heights, but they made sure to be there, and they are still there now, long after the Chasna, as they always will be for our family and for yours too. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Now, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate Aliyah as a charitable organization? Well, dear friends, I'd like to elaborate on that a little bit. Our family celebrated a Sheva Brachas at Aliyah, but Aliyah is there for all occasions when we need them. Our family also went through a tragedy in recent years. We sadly lost a nephew, Menachem Mendel, Ben Rav Shalom, Alev Shalom, and Aliyah was there for us too. The doors were open, just like we celebrated an incredible Sheva Brachas, we also observed a very, very heartfelt Shloishim. Rabbi Moshe and Sarah Feiglin were there to comfort us as they were there to dance and cry with us in Simcha equally. Our dear son Ari has been involved and continues to be involved, and we are forever grateful. I'm humbled that I can say on behalf of all of the thousands of parents of whose children have been through Aliyah, an enormous heartfelt thank you for the shluchim of Aliyah, our fellow dear brother and sister, Rabbi Moshe and Sarah Feiglin, who deserve all the accolades and all the support that they should get. <laughs> to, me, to me personally, this is captured by an incident that occurred when a yid, a young yid was standing in Yechidus with the Rebbe. He was a young man, he was going through a major life challenge, and the Rebbe asked him many questions, gave him a bracha, and as he walked out the Rebbe's room, the Rebbe said to him, make sure to update me, make sure to keep me updated on your condition. And he looked at the Rebbe and he said, Rebbe, do you really, really mean that? And the Rebbe answered and he said incredible words. He said, I would never say something I don't mean. Every one of us knows that when Rabbi Moshe and Sarah Feiglin say they're gonna be there, they mean it with their fiber, they mean it as shluchim of the Rebbe as they have been 24 seven for thousands of our kinder here and they need and deserve all of our support and our shutfus and it's a suchus for us to do so. Thank you very much for sharing. And you go from strength to strength. We are now holding at $271,772 so far. Continue. Dear friends, the, the Mishnah tells us, Ben Esterim Lirdaif, at 20, Lirdaif is to pursue a livelihood. We want everyone in this room and all of you watching at home and any of you around the world, we want Rabbi Moshe, Sarah Feiglin, and the incredible dedicated staff, we want them to de be devoted to our kinder. And for them to be devoted to our kinder and to not to have any other worries, it means that we have to step up big time. Ben Estrim, Lerdoiv, is that they can pursue what they need to do, Baruchnis, and that we can have the Sechus to be a Shutuf Begashmis with them. And in doing so, we will be assured that all of our kinder, of, of all of ours who are here, and, and any time will come, and the years ahead, they will have a home where they will grow, and they will become Hasidim, and they will reach their potential, as is the wish of, and desire of every single one of us as parents, Amen. Thank you very much. And without further ado,
Continue this Fabrengen. We're not stopping. I got Hans Nabissel. After 
that we heard such beautiful Dibrei Toida from the Rebbe and Maria Tansen, such a beautiful song. Ay da 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 maya. Ya da da idri da da maya ya ya. Ay da 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 maya maya ma idri da da. Ay ya ya idri da da maya ya ya. Ay da 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 maya. Avinu malikeinu uyein lonu melech uyein lonu melech uyein oto Avinu malikeinu uyein We heard so much about you singing. It's only appropriate to sing this song. But the Yiddish understood me, yeah? Auf dem Weg heim, zusammen mit dem Fabrik. 
auf dem Weg Heimat spürst ins Geschehen. Jetzt bin ich einer allein, oh, in mein Herz ist bei. Jetzt bin ich einer allein, ob in dem Zinnigel ich gedeihe. Auf dem Weg heim, zusammen beim Reben verbringt. Auf dem Weg heim, mal so viel Aspuß ins Geschenk. Jetzt bin ich einer allein, oh, in mein Herz ist weg. Jetzt bin ich einer allein, ob in dem Zinnigel ich gedeihe.
world-renowned lecturer, Rabbi Simon Jacobson. Good evening, and a good Erev Rosh Hashanah. Yutas Kistel, Lashana Teva. Belimad Achsidis, Vedak Achsidis, Tikoseva Vesichasemu. And I salute Aliyah and all of you. Such a beautiful event, such a critical cause. A little while ago, a couple who had several teenagers, all rebellious in their own particular way, struggling, came to see me. And they were uh, obviously complaining, what do we do? Children will not follow any rules, any guidelines, not Shabbos, not Yom Tov. And they went into more detail, I'm not going to go into all the detail here. So I said, what did you try? We tried everything. First we tried being sweet. Then we tried being disciplinarian. Nothing works. And I uh, reminded myself, a video that I saw, I don't know if it's public, where a couple, a couple goes over to the Rebbe, similar complaint. And the Rebbe responds to them and said, rebellion? Isn't that the nature of uh, a human being? You should be happy that your children are not just sitting around mediocre, passive, conforming, conforming. The parents really didn't get it. And the Rebbe kept trying to drive the point home. I recently heard a story from a friend of mine who lives in Europe. He said when he went in his early years to school, one of the elite schools in Europe, so it was known in those circles that there was one family, one of the richest families in Europe, who had a son, who was able to get into every school, but he was the biggest troublemaker. He was thrown out one school after another. And finally, he said, we were all excited. Maybe finally going to come to this school and make a little trouble here, too. And yes, he arrived. He says, I was in his class. And we're all waiting to see this, uh, this rebel, this mutineer. And he's sitting quietly throughout the entire class. So I thought maybe he was warned. Maybe he was told, don't make any trouble. This is your last chance. No, right before the bell's about to ring, this uh, student, this famous, infamous student, raised his hand, and he said to the teacher, he said, listen, I've been listening very closely for the last 40 minutes, and um, you really don't know how to teach. But I have good news for you. If you come to my house tonight, I'll give you some lessons. So you could imagine the teacher pulled him out of the class, the principal, and he was thrown out of the school. So this guy, who I know, my friend, said, years, I wanted to know what happened once we grew up. What happened to this guy? I was sure either he became a criminal or he became some type of uh, tycoon running one of the biggest companies on earth. So he looked up his name, and what did he discover? Yes, he's the chairman of creative initiatives in New York Library. Creative initiatives. So I went to look it up myself on the website. And I see he comes up with ideas out of the box that nobody else comes up with. That has transformed New York Library, which is in Manhattan, Fifth Avenue. For those that want to know where it is, right near the Chabad of Midtown. In case you need a landmark. This is the essence of what the Rebbe taught. Especially in the 60s and 70s, when the Rebbe would speak about the rebellion of young people. 
spoke about the hippie movement, the youth. And in the United States, it was seen, those of us that are old enough to remember, as a very disruptive time. The young were not following rules. They weren't dressing dress codes. They were breaking laws, rebelling, demonstrating. And the Rebbe said, to paraphrase, one of the most powerful statements, which I believe is the essence of why we're here, and something that can really change and revolutionize how you look at a human being, especially as a young human being. And the Rebbe said, it's a mistake for people to think that the rebellion in young people is coming from a bad place. It's actually coming from the neshama, which is compared to ner Hashem nishma sodom. It's a ner, it's a fire. Fire is very powerful. It's very passionate. It's restless. It doesn't rest for one second. So adults that can't help should get out of the way. And those that want to really appreciate what an Hashem is, that being expressed by a young person is that they want to change the world and are frustrated, don't know how. They don't accept the status quo. So the goal is that the more seasoned adults should channel and harness that energy, like laser energy, toward a spiritual revolution. Because obviously fire, when it's not harnessed, can go the other direction too. We understand there's risks. But what's the option? To put out the fire? To shut down that passion? To direct it toward a spiritual revolution. I can tell you from personal experience, I captured this idea in a chapter in Toward a Meaningful Life called Youth. How many people it impacted. Because they would never expect to hear that from a so-called traditional rabbi. But this was the Rebbe, and that's why the Rebbe had that power to ignite souls, to harness that passion and that neshama. It's not so easy, but that's how you change the world. So here at Aliyah, beautiful name, Aliyah, elevate, like a flame that, li that rises, celebrating that passionate, rebellious nature, but with the goal of harnessing it to a true revolution. Just like Avram Avinu, thousands of years ago, pioneering a new way, a new path that does not accept the status quo, that's nonconformist, trailblazing. So I salute you all again, Aliyah, especially all the students and all those that have gone through Aliyah and continue to do so. Take that energy and Hashem, there's nothing more powerful than the fire of a soul. We're born with it, and in our youth it comes alive, and unfortunately for many, it starts to uh, dissipate, it starts to lower. Never let that fire burn out. On the contrary, when you put all these fires together, they join in a cosmic symphony that will transform this world. Mola Odes Deus Hashem. Kamayim la yom achasim, filling the world with divine knowledge as the waters cover the sea. A revolution born from Aliyah. So is there a greater cause to support than one that is occupied completely with igniting and keeping that flame burning? And even when that flame burns in all different directions, harnessing it. So what can we say? This is lives, this is generations, this is the future. Everyone should have a good yontif. Rosh Hashanah Lechsidis, again, much hatzlacha, may you surpass double and triple the goal here tonight. I was born and raised in Kanaes. I would say that by sixth grade, I got kicked out of 20 schools. So as a seventh grade dropout, we felt like there was no place for us to be. No system is willing to take us. No school is willing to take us. We're always just going up and down Kingston Avenue, rollerblading, biking. Lost. I started off in Alitera, got good grades. Towards when I was 20 or so, I started being less involved with the yeshiva. Found myself, you know, on a different life journey. Was doing my own thing, you know. There were other rabbis that were there that were just, they, they saw that I wasn't doing what they wanted me to be doing and they sent me flying and they just, just told me to pack up and leave. 
I grew up in Miami. And then in 2000, I moved to Grand Heights. I was, you know, before law school or during law school, but I wasn't really connected at all into Yiddishkeit at that time. I was really unplugged. I uh, got a call from a friend of mine, Chaim Kamen, and he told me that there was um, this shul come to on Shabbos, it's Kiddush only. And when a lot of us, when we heard that there you know, it was a shul, we weren't interested because we didn't want to go to a shul. I mean, I loved Grand Heights, I loved the Rebbe, but I felt like I was an outsider. My she made me feel like I was an insider. Suddenly you find this place, Aliyah, which is taking you for who you are, and you're always welcome. Oh, Feiglin helped me finding a job, he helped me start my life. I've never been on drugs, I've never done alcohol. I, I've never been on routes that lots and lots of my friends did take and really got lost within that route, I feel like Aliyah held me up. The rabbi was always, always welcoming, never judgmental. I was getting out of the car once in Travis, and he comes up to me and he's like, hey Morty, how's it going, how you doing? And we chatted for a smooth for a few minutes and there was not one second that I felt that he was looking down at me. He knew that, hey look, you know, he has his job, you know, he's in, he's in his journey of life and he'll find his place, you know, as long as he feels a place and he has a place where he can have a sense of belonging. And I think that's what kept me connected. Aliyah told me that you can love Judaism, you can love God, and God will still love you back for who you are. I feel like I'm connected with God today and connected with the Rebbe in a way that I am so whole with it, only because Aliyah taught me that I can be accepted for who I am. That inclusiveness, or that, you know, a place where you can feel at home, a place where you don't have to worry about being judged. That's where, you know, Aliyah really came and really had something that, that I didn't have anywhere else. So any, anything religious, anything of my journey, to, you know, to where I am today, if it wasn't for Aliyah, I don't think I would be here. Aliyah brought my own self-confidence to a level where I connected with Hashem in a totally new way. And I see Mashi doing it for people every single day and I try to emulate that and pay forward. Gershon Freistadt on the piano. Oh, yeah. 
Just a, a little uh, calculation error that uh, my parents, who came here all the way from Australia, actually gave 77,000 towards our goal of tonight, which is 770. And uh, if you guys notice the security when we came in here, we can't leave till we hit our goal tonight. So, guys, enjoy the stakes. Aaron. Thank you, thank you. And now for the honorees. We are truly blessed to be honoring three unique individuals that have grown with Aliyah and have given back in a very, very large way. Tonight's first honoree is a very special individual who even while he was going through his own journey, always gave back to Aliyah. Aliyah was always there for Levi Popak and Levi was always there for Aliyah. Most of the beautiful upgrades and renovations to Aliyah that happened over the past 20 years, from the shul, to the lounge, to the music studio, to the gym, to the upstairs deck, we were, were inspired and helped by Levy and Sterna Popak. And lots and lots of materials were sponsored by his father, who is here with us tonight, Rabbi Yossi Popak. Thank you, Levy, and thank you, Zalman Lazell. <clears throat> no matter how, no matter what crazy ideas we came up with, Levy was always there and fully on board. Levy and Sterner were able to benefit from the upgrades they made by having two brisim in the beautiful space we built together. Levy also gives his time to a mentor and uh, to, to, to mentor the guys from Aliyah, and they call him regularly for business advice and life advice. It is an honor to be welcoming Levy and Sterna Popak up to the stage to accept our gift of love and appreciation, and thank you for constantly being a pillar of love at Aliyah in our community. May the unconditional love and attention you share with younger guys at Aliyah, shine back at you and your family. 
family. And now for number two. Tonight's second honoree is our longtime member who found himself a safe haven at Aliyah growing up. Aliyah's unconditional love, warmth, and acceptance enabled him to grow and thrive. Today, Mendy Barone not only gave back to Aliyah, but put together this entire evening. All the way from its inception to its final touches and push this dinner. And push this dinner from a humble evening at Aliyah to this. Wow. Yo, Mendy. Mendy won't even take a tip for the hundreds of hours he invested in making sure Aliyah's 20 year anniversary dinner would be absolutely next level in every possible way. Mendy, is, it is our honor to present you with this gift this evening, and may you be blessed with an abundance of revealed goodness. Amen. Last but not least, our third and final honoree this evening is another special individual that grew up on Aliyah Shabbaton's Farbrengan's parties and strong member of the Aliyah family. Morty Fink introduced his father to Aliyah when he made Kedushim for his daughters at Aliyah. His father was very impressed by what he saw and immediately became a donor and helped direct other funds to Aliyah as well. The passing of Reb Shmuel Fink, of blessed memory, was a big shock for the Fink family and for the Crown Heights community. Losing a father wasn't easy for Morty, but Morty made it his business to not only continue in his father's charitable ways, but took giving tzedakah to a whole new level. May your generosity tip the global scale to the positive, and let's see your father back here with the complete Geula now. One more slight detail. Thanks to Morty. I actually learn chassidus every week. Morty calls me every Thursday. Rabbi, we've got to learn some Lakhita Torah before Shabbos. He comes over, and I tear myself away from whatever I'm doing, and we sit and we learn, get ready for Shabbos a little bit. Thank you, Morty. Very good. Okay, music. You want a picture? Yeah, yeah, I'll put you. Give them a round of applause. And now for more of Shmuel Lemmer. Wow, what an honor and pleasure to be here tonight with you. I am so inspired by this incredible organization, not just by being here and performing here, 
but experiencing it over here, sitting with at the table with such tired and neshama tzaddikim and hearing about the experience and their life and what Aliyah did for them. So wherever you are, if you're here sitting here in the room or if you're in your dining room or watching on your couch, wherever you are, thinking about, you know, what am I going to contribute? What am I going to help? You never know. Pruta, pruta mitzvah if you can just add a little bit more, give that $36 donation, 360, 180, whatever works. You anyway gave master, you have it. So, to an incredible organization, so that's speaking from my heart. Kalakavod. I'm <laughs> Thank <laughs> My friend Benny Friedman to join me with this next song.
Guys, let's hear a big hand for Shulim. Amazing, amazing, as usual. Right back at you. <laughs> A man last Sunday who was on his way back home from a wedding in Chicago and was traveling alone. He said he came from Vilna, a survivor I could tell, and I helped him with his suitcase. He could not walk very well. Stuart gave us coffee as we settled on the plane And I asked him why he bothers at his age there'd be no blame He said no simcha is a burden Though I miss my dear late wife Then he shared with me a story that has changed my view of life Danced round and round in circles As if the world had done no wrong From evening until morning Filling up the shoe with song Though we had no Sifrei Toyra To clutch close to our hearts In the place we held the future Of a past so torn apart to go and what to do and how to leave the pain behind my heart said go to Vilna there I pray it once again for a chance to find a loved one or perhaps a childhood friend it took many months to get there from the late spring to the fall Many others, close to 400 in all. It was healing, darkened souls now mixed with light. When someone proudly cried out, Simchas Toyra is tonight. We danced round and round in circles as if the world had done no wrong. Filling up the shoe with song Though we had no safe to To clutch close to our hearts In the place we held the future Of a past so torn Toward the shore, our spirits in a trance And we tore apart the barricade In defiance we would dance But the scene before our eyes Shook us to the core Scraps of cedar, bullet holes Blood stains on the floor Turning to we looked on in despair There'd be no scrolls to dance with The only ark was big Then we heard two children crying A boy and girl who no one knew Then we realized no children Were among us but those two We danced round and round in circles As if the world Do 
शे भी मेरा बेताले मेरा बेताले רבות עברה מה זה בדרך, ואני הולך עם ראש למעלה, כל אחד הוא בן או בת של מלך. ככה היה, וככה זה גם הלאה, יהודי עם נשמה בוערת, בכל מקום ובכל ארץ, אני לא רוצה שיהיה אחרת. יהודי אני, זה מה שהוא נצחי, בני אברהם, יצחק ויעקב, בן עוד שרה רבקה לכם ולעיוני אברהם, יצחק ויעקב. Going to the mic for me feels like a time of like starting anew, starting something fresh. I'm interested in it, but like I just I like my privacy. I could literally count on my hand like the amount of times I went to the mic. 
Here we have guys who didn't go to mikveh for years because they, they wouldn't want to go to a regular public mikveh. By having this mikveh, each and every one of them could go on their own, and it's an experience what they would never have. We built uh, first, one at a time, one of a kind, mikvehs for guys who would love to go on their birthday, would love to go before they go to the aisle, would love to go for any special occasion, Ervin Kipper, but there's no way they're going to a public one, and they haven't gone in years. Some of these guys haven't gone since they're by mitzvah. So many kids have trauma associated with mikvehs, and suddenly they were, there's one made just for them. So I found out through Instagram, I saw my favorite post about the mikvah, so I was like following along, seeing when it was ready. My birthday came up, so I called it at Baglin. I came Friday before Shabbos, before my birthday, and I went to the mikvah, and it was a really good experience. Eric and Kipper, when the mikvah opened, I made a Google spreadsheet to help organize that it'd be only one guy at a time. Within minutes, it was full. The entire Eric and Kipper afternoon was full. It, it filled up. I never imagined so many guys who, who cared about a mikvah after Kipper, and they did, and it was so grateful. I could take my time. I could think to like, like meditate before, think about like what you've done with your life, and like, prepare to like start the next the next phase of life. You feel like clean again, so so to say. I really want to thank Rabbi Faglin, the donors, Aliyah, and everybody that was involved in this mikvah. And now, thanks to Aliyah's mikvah, I could start going to mikvah more often. And now. Introducing the man of the evening, our friend, mentor, and also rabbi, Maishi Faglin. Gadyantif, I love you, each and every one of you. L'chaim, Gadyantif, we're in Chaydesh Kislev, Chaydesh Geula, the month of success, and tonight is a night of success. Tonight is a night of blessings, and tonight is a night of gratitude. I want to share the opening remarks said by George Rohr, the Kinnis Shulchan this year, at the Aliyah table, we were listening, and that's one thing that I stuck in my mind. When he got there for his keynote speech, he said, Katanti Mikal Hachasidim. Based on the Apostolic Phoenix Parsha, where Yaakov Avino says, I've become humbled in front of all the Chasadim, the Chesed that Hashem said. But here tonight, we're not thanking Hashem for the Chesed, because Hashem has plenty of Chesed. We're thanking Hashem for the Chasidim, for the family, for the Aliyah family, for everybody here tonight. It is a true blessing that we have everybody here, and I'm truly indebted, and I'm grateful. And not just am I grateful for everybody here tonight, first of all, I wanna call on a good friend of mine, uh, Mendy Baich, Harav Mendy Baich, who, uh, who's been there to come up on stage for a minute. Mendy. Many bites, who's at Aliyah day in, day out. And not, not always are they fun days. Some, there are a lot of fun days, but he's dedicated and he loves each and every one of you. And Mendy, please come up and join me up on stage. Thank you, Mendy. Before I start my speech, Mendy's gonna give a minute. Please give your attention to Mendy. Okay. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just want to say that, um, so I'm working with Aliyah, I think for around 10, 12 years. And the, the one thing that uh, I can say is that what it really gets to me is that we need to have unconditional love. And when you realize that you have unconditional love for other people, this is a backtrack for a second. First, you, have, you need to have unconditional love for yourself. 
And by having unconditional love for yourself, you can have unconditional love for every human being. So Aliyah taught me that going through my own personal struggles. When I was 18 and 19, you know, I had my own personal struggles. I wasn't really religious. And I would come stop by Aliyah. And I met Moshe the first time in 18. And I was like, wow, this is a great place. I could feel free. And he just gives me this amount of love. And I was like, this is great. And then I went to Wilkesbury, and I th thank God through that, came um, from and religious. And then that got me the guidance of this concept of love and unconditional love. And I think personally now, in our last battle in our, in, you know, before we have, you know, we're having redemption with God's help, and we're having Mashiach, the last battle we have is this battle of unconditional love. How do you love someone that sometimes gives you anxiety, gives you angry, you know, your own kids sometimes give you hard trouble. That's our battle now, to give unconditional love to our children. Our own children, is, 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 is this the redemption? And, uh, you know, half of the kids that we have, you know, we have guys from, from Crown Heights, but a lot of guys, we have guys from Shluchim kids come to us, Leo. so we see that the struggle is not outside, but it's really inside Chabad, inside us, and we need to have this unconditional love and when you and the trick is I want to say is when you work on yourself you can help others so that's what's a special thing about Aliyah is that we help other people here and uh, unconditional love yeah unconditional love thank you thank you thank you Mendy and Mendy Mendy is completely on point Mendy is completely on target it's absolutely all about the conditional love before I start my speech I just want to say that um, uh, we see a goal over there Guys, we have a bunch of loving, good, generous, holy people over here. We have to hit our goal tonight. It's really important, not just for me, but for all the people here. Show the people here some love. Let's go. Let's show the people that we care about the young generation. Let's show them. When you give on the campaign tonight, every dollar is being doubled. You are showing the young generation that they matter. And that is a message tonight that doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. We don't care. We love you as you are, how you are, and we're willing to put our money to it. We're putting our money where our mouth is. This is the message of tonight, unconditional love without exception. Getting back to my speech, Katointi. Yaakov Avinu says to Hashem, Katointi, I'm humbled by all the chesed you've done. Now, Yaakov Avinu is about to approach Esav. Now, Esav, now, Yaakov had plenty of schusim to rely on. He had plenty of what to, to rely on to to be saved from Esau. Why did he have to say, Katointi, I'm humbled? Because Yaakov Avinu knew that he could rely on his own merits to be blessed. But he wanted to rely on his own merits because when you rely on your own merits, you're limited to your own merits. But when you're humble, you're infinite. And when you're infinite, you open yourself up to infinite blessings. And that's where Yaakov is going. And that's where we are tonight. We're not relying on our own merits. We want to go above and beyond every limitation possible. This year is Shnas Hakil, the year of gathering, the year of infinity, and we have to go above and beyond. If we want to achieve the ultimate goal, we have to go above and beyond. It's not going to happen through enjoying a nice night out. It's beautiful, but we have to go above and beyond. Tonight, first of all, I want to thank my wife, Sarah, my children, Devar Liza, Menachem Mendel, Avram Shmuelosh, and Hanadina, who all chipped in to help make tonight happen. My fellow Shluchim that work closely with Aliyah on a day-to-day -day basis, Reb Nata Shemtev, Reb Mendi Baich, Yosef Halevi, who work around the clock helping people in our community. And I can say, Katainti, I'm humbled by so many blessings we have here tonight. First of all, Katainti, I'm humbled by the beautiful home we have a few steps away from this very hall we're celebrating tonight, down the block on 527 East York Avenue. We have this beautiful home with so many, with a, with a rooftop deck, with a lounge, with a gym, and now we have a one at a time mix for unbelievable, who would have imagined? <laughs> Katainti for all the jobs that we're able to provide our guys with. Katainti for all the open house Shabbos and Yot of meals that we serve to some beautiful, warm, smiling faces that, that join our Shabbos and Yontif tables for myself and the other Aliyah rabbis. Katointi for the young men and the couples at our table that, uh, that, are, that come to Aliyah that needed a little therapy and we're able to direct them to therapy and even pay for their therapy if they needed because Katointi, we can. Baruch Hashem, we can do it. Thanks to you. Katointi. They were able to have annual summer and winter Shabbatons 
every year. The guys look forward to year to year. Katainti for the Tuesday night basketball in all Taira. Katainti for the amazing film booth that we have on East on Kingston Avenue, which uh, was inspired by the guys. Katainti. This has really become. It's not just a film booth. It's actually like a Friday afternoon for bringin booth. We have, we have for bison there. We have lachaim there. It's becoming a real sit situation over there. And uh, this booth was uh, actually sponsored by my good friend Moishi Gurkov in memory of Levy Hines. Moishi Gurkov, thank you. Moishi, by the way, flew in from Atlanta to be here tonight. And he, and he did it. Levy Hines is in Shama Shehav and Aliyah. I mean, there's a Shama every week, every pair of film that's put on over there is getting the Shama higher and higher. Katainti for the younger Aliyah division. We opened up a few years ago for the under 18s by Yosef Alevi, who serves as a big brother and a mentor, and he successfully gets so many young guys back to Yeshiva. Katainti for the comfortable, laid back, inspiring Shabbos Minyan, and the guys like to come to because it doesn't matter how you dress, how you look, everyone belongs, and no one feels judged. Katainti for the many young men who. Baruch Hashem, we were able to walk to the chuppah, who walk to the marriage, and see them get happily married. Katainti for the increasingly popular couples workshops. My wife Sarah started last Hanukkah, and it's become increasingly popular and having tremendously positive results. Chaim. Okay, I'm sorry, now I'm running out of time. So we're going to wrap it up. For the first time in early history, we have an Aliyah member's daughter getting married to an Aliyah member. This is 20 years. 20 years ago, little Bailey Friedman would come to Aliyah and play with my daughter 20 years ago. They'll play together in Aliyah Shul. 20 years later, she is getting married in Shabbat to Yaakov Uchafi, and everyone's invited. We'll see you there in Mexico. 20 years ago, my wife started, decided to follow the Rebbe's answers, and I've had a success in all directions. What is our magic? Our magic is the Baal, we didn't invent this stuff. We did not invent this. This is the Baal Shem Tov's teachings. This is Alter Rebbe's teachings. This is all the Rebbeim's teachings. Everything we do here is all Chabad Chassidus. The only thing, the only revolution we did is we took what uh, the Chabad outreach and we directed it in reach. We just reflected it backwards and that's all we did. I have to give a thank you before you knocked me off the stage to, to Mendy Baran. Mendy, come on. This is a guy who was kicked out of 20 yeshivas. And look what he produced tonight. Mendy Baran, A to Z. This is, this is a Mendy Baran production. If Ali wasn't there, Baruch Hashem were there. Anyway, we're not going to get to Beryl Groner, who made these tremendous videos that you saw tonight. Chaim Zippel, who produced tonight's event, A to Z. Shmuley Ganevish, who did all the graphics you've been seeing on Kingston Avenue and all over Crown Heights. Shimmy Kaplan for the lighting, for the photo booth. Barry Spiteski for love and support. See you alive for being our fans. My parents that came from Melbourne, Australia. Mr. Joe Ronov who's, and uh, Mr. D Dr. Mailing, who have been longtime supporters, but you guys are out of town, but I know you're watching online, so I want to give you a shout out to you guys who are supporting from, for, from Chicago and from Florida and from all our supporters all over the world. And and to, and to all our donors, all the Zavulans, you guys here tonight, you're the Zavulans. You are, whether you're a matching donor, whether you're, you're a Mafta Yona, whether you're whatever you are, you, you are there. And I, I know I got to get down, and Benny and, and Lemmer are very excited to get back up, but I, I have to finish off. Um, with one last letter that it was 4 a.m. this morning. My wife and I were sitting, going through different details of the dinner, and we said, you know what? My friend Yechil Jaffe, I, I looked at his text. He says, you got to email the Rebbe for a bracha. I said, well, we went to the aisle last week for a bracha. Every day you should ask the Rebbe for a bracha. So I said, okay, fine. I wrote a letter to the Rebbe. I opened up an igris, and the igris was written to the shliach of Glasgow, who was doing his anniversary dinner on the week of Yutes Kislev. And it was a whole letter the Rebbe saying about bracha and atzlacha with the youth, bracha and atzlacha with everything that you do. What, the work that you do is unimaginably great. And, and you should be successful and continue mechayel chayel. And... The Rebbe ended off, may Hashem grant that the anniversary dinner should have the utmost aslach in every respect, 
and may he bestow his generous brachis on each and every one of you. Every one of you guys, every one of you in the crowd, with your family, to enjoy health, health, prosperity, both materially and spiritually. So here it is, guys, tonight. Sorry, one of my time. Tonight I say L'chaim, G'dyantiv, Eschadish Kislev, Chagagula. Let's hit a home run. Guys, we only have a few minutes left till the dinner's over. Let's make it real. Open up your phones. Go to Leah20.com. And let's show the young people that they matter. L'chaim. Hey, hey, you guys enjoy tonight? Come on. Come on. I know I'm the producer, but behind me there's a whole team of people who really pull this event together. What's up, Lizelle? Um, I want to say thank you to the entire MLP team, Pedro and everyone, thank you. Our director, Chaim Zippel, for hooking up the entire timeline. Gershon Freistadt and the band. Gershon worked on the show for a month. Guys, this is the music you're listening to today. Gershon Freistadt. <laughs> Benny Lemmer, Benny, Benny Friedman and Chelm Lemmer. Our live stream sound engineer, those of you watching the live stream, uh, really is Rahi. And our house sound engineer, Barat. Come on guys, I wanna hear you. These guys worked hard, come on. <laughs> our live stream clue, Shai Kleiman. CS Events, SE Events, our stage manager, Freddy Fried, Mendel Levington, Table One Catering for the Food, ANS Party Rental for the Stage, Sergeant Mike Barada from the 7 1 Precinct, and Sergeant Ben Gelber. Come on, guys. Shmulik Ben Arush for the video walls. Visual Live, Mika Sofer from COL Live. Film and production, Barrel Groner, graphic design, Shmuley Gunwich, PR, Dvora Faglin. Thank you very much. We hope you guys enjoy the night. I want to personally thank you all for coming, sharing this an amazing, amazing opportunity and event. We all see what the Aliyah family has done for so many people. Aliyah is there supporting so many of us and people around the world and the community here. Let's be there to support Aliyah tonight. We still have a little bit of a way to go. We are around $318,000, and Amir Tashem will get to $770,000 tonight. The website is still open. You can still go, and there's a, like a hundred ways that you can pay. So feel free, whether you're here live or whether you're online live, please open your hearts and open your wallets and feel free to contribute and be a partner. And now for the finale, enjoy the last music of the evening. I'm 
Pledge for Aliyah. Give now, give now. Thank you, guys. Okay, the, the doors are officially locked now. And tell everyone until we hit you, hit our goal. Our goal. Ha 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 